What character from Mario would you rather be? I'd be a Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a Goomba, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd be a Goomba, bro. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the Harvest Wars Podcast, episode 52. I'm Austin. I'm Noah. And welcome back, boys. It's going to be a good one. And it's going to be a good one because the Raiders got their first win. So I got to shave the beard. I'm no longer 100. It wound the clock back a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> For sure, the worst part of this podcast is starting it. It's got to be. Oh, that's I'm probably starting it and ending it and then what happens between starting I think so, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they said, what's the worst part of this podcast, I'd say probably the day we started it. <laughs> what's the best part? The day I end it. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's get right into it. So, like I said, the Raiders just won. They beat the Broncos. Finally got the first one of the season. Going in uh, versus the Chiefs at 1-3. and three. I think uh, God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to ask, do you think this gives the Raiders enough steam to beat the Chiefs? Oh, it's so cold in here. Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> Honestly, every time I'm, I'm in here yeah. sweating, that was cold. Do you think the Raiders beating the Broncos gives them enough steam to beat the Chiefs this week? It, it could. <laughs> no. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> it couldn't hurt. Not double digit loss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it couldn't hurt. It couldn't... <laughs> well, I mean, it, it shows... I mean, I've always thought this, this, you know, this team was good enough they could beat a really good team. Yeah. We've also seen them lose to not very good teams. That's true. We've seen uh, them get blown up by the Jets and Falcons in years past. So it's just one of those, it's just could be one of those days every day. But we, I, the thing that does give me life, where are you going? See ya. <laughs> I need a sweatshirt, bro. Yeah. All right. Go get a little, a little comfy. I'm going to talk to them. So you guys, uh, you guys like tacos or? Hey, more pizza people. <clears throat> We're in for a cold, cold SoCal winter. <laughs> Here's the, the faith I do have against the Raiders beating the Chiefs. Like you said, it's it, it's any given Sunday, right? We've lost to really bad teams. We've beaten really good teams. One of those really good teams we beat was the Chiefs a year or two back, and they were the only time they lost that season was against us. And that gave me the little inspiration of hope. They're like, we we can do anything. And now we have an even better team with Devontae, Chandler Jones. Everyone's on a contract. I'm a little too confident, but I think it now it does. I think my confidence would be higher if it wasn't Monday Night Football, though. I'm not going to lie. The prime time gives me a heart attack. I'm not saying this is true of the Raiders, but 99% <laughs> of the time when the team is going into a matchup yeah. and the team, the coaches, and the fans are saying – it's any given Sunday in this sport. <laughs> if they ask you, so what do you think about the upcoming game? Any given Sunday. <laughs> then that is not a good sign. Dude, we're the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> that, that, that means rough things are coming. Everyone's like, what that's, if the Raiders win? <laughs> that, that's what you say before you get blown up by 30 oh, yeah. points. <laughs> it's totally right, dude. We just go in and like, we could do it. <laughs> any given Sunday. If Crazier things have happened. Derek's going to go in the huddle and go, why not us? <laughs> Oh yeah, why not? Why not, <laughs> why, why not us is another That's another what, crazy one. <laughs> you're, you're, what, do you think the Raiders are gonna line up at the uh, the Chiefs logo again, or do you think we're gonna take a break? Because <laughs> it did not go too well last time. So Aaron Judge hit his 60 second home run, right? And the guy that caught it, apparently he's a freaking millionaire or something, which is a wild cook, my, my man, you, you deserve it. But uh, I wanted to know, if you were like valuing at $2 million or to $5 million, what would you specifically ask for if you caught that home run? The bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there, you know, there's people that, I know some people are saying like, no, he's the one that hit the home run, he deserves it. Yeah. I would just like want a picture with him and like a signed ball. <laughs> Better man than me. With, with, with a lot of home runs, like a normal home run, yeah maybe if it's uh, like if it's a um if it's like somebody's first career home yeah, run or it's like a, it if, if it's if it's a lesser actually that's not even true i'm probably still still trying to get what i can get for it but something Wingstop like gift that card. like that's like when we're talking yeah. like retiring money yeah <laughs> if they walk up if a, if i catch it and someone immediately walks up to me and says i'll give you one million dollars for it. i'm like well let's hang on let's let's just breathe am i throwing this ball back now think of how many v bucks that is that's a lot of <laughs> think about how wild it would be he caught it and they instantly 
escorted him out of the building, like to the back. Mm-hmm. You got to know something. You, you got to know you're in for. Also, a I think treat. it's wild that Aaron Judge, sixty-two home runs. People are saying it's the the way people are saying it is the American League record because yeah. it is the American League home run so uh-huh. single season home run record. That being said, really the it's like the clean home run record because yeah. all the people that hit more home runs than him, there's three of them that have done that have had more home runs in a season. They all happen to be National League, but they also all happen to be yeah. They be shooting. They, <laughs> that, <laughs> he's an ice my man. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they all happen to be on uh, MJ's secret stuff. And, yeah. Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. So so I think it's it's dumb for people to try to like belittle his achievement by being like, yeah. well, 60, he's still uh, fully 10 short of the record. Yeah, it's like, well, Barry Bonds. I'm like, okay, can we just relax? Like, why are we trying to d- degrade the man for hitting 62 home runs right now? Yeah, and I think the, the whole ster- steroids argument, I think it's, I don't know, both sides can be kind of stupid, but... Um, because I think Barry Bonds and all those guys were tremendous athletes, and you have yeah. to recognize their con- contributions to the game. Uh-huh. Uh, that that being said, people that are like, "Well, he still had to put the bat on the ball." Yeah, the, the argument of somebody taking steroids still had to put their bat on the ball is the stupidest thing because mm-hmm. nobody ever said that it was. Nobody ever said it's an automatic home run every exactly, time it's yeah. to the plate, like. Yes, they did still have to hit hit the ball, but that's not the only thing that goes into being an effective baseball player. Dude, you what? have to hit the ball and hit it hard and well. Mm-hmm. And if you're already getting an advantage, it's on. Yeah, that's it's the same thing with the Astros cheating, saying, "Well, they still had to make contact." Sometimes it yeah, feels but, like the fans feel like they just like they just took a random dude off the street, gave him steroids, and he hit seventy home runs. I'm like, that's not what happened. He was a pro athlete and then took steroids. Like he made it. It was, it was just him. Like, he did it, and then he happened to do steroids also. Well, yeah, but... Yes, but also I'm saying that, like... That it's... That it did still help him a lot. Oh, yeah. No, my, it, yeah. my point. Is uh-huh. that, like, it's... I don't know. I think it's some... some I, I fall somewhere in the middle with most yeah, steroid go, steroid guys because it's, like... Because, yeah, you couldn't just take anybody, give them juice, and they'd do better. Uh-huh. But also, if you give somebody juice, they are gonna, gonna hit do the thing seven hundred. <laughs> well, like like that homeless guy that you take off the street. Yeah, he's not gonna be a Hall of Fame player just because you give him steroids. Yeah. But he will probably be better than a, yeah. a random homeless guy you take off the street oh, that's yeah. not on steroids. And who do you think is gonna hit the ball better, a pro athlete or a pro athlete with steroids? <laughs> like who do you think is gonna do better? <laughs> do better overall. <laughs> also, some of those players, they're like before and after pictures are wild. Yeah, you where, where, yeah. <laughs> like Mark McGuire. Yeah, you, know, you ever think like how you, we you see his him? biceps like tripled in size and if gained like fifty yeah. veins? If your traps uh, turn into ninety degrees, we got to know something's going on. Oh no, yes, yeah, so some, something. <laughs> it's like it's like them like normal high school, and it's like in the <laughs> like all right, uh, okay, you had how many home runs again? <laughs> but I think I would ask however much money. I don't care. Are you asking for season tickets for sure? Like it, as addition to the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking for all of it. I mean, you got if there's if there's one thing I learned from watching countless episodes of Pawn Stars, yeah, start high, yeah. work your way down. So exactly. I'm starting it off. I'm saying like ten million dollars. lifetime tickets and ten milli <laughs> and um, a spot on the roster, <laughs> yeah, <something like> that. <laughs> that's good. And and then just well, I'll mer- oh, I'm I'm willing to go a lot lower than that, but that's what yeah, I'm that's starting. my starting point. I might throw in like I, I want a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> like a custom made uniform. It's also that got me. Thinking. It's probably not very expensive, so they could probably make that happen. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, that's gonna be real tough to get. To. <laughs> like, all right, uh, MLBShop.com. I mean, oh uh, dang, I have to spend 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got me thinking. Is this like one of the only sports where really something like that can happen? Because when in like soccer is like the the ball going in the stands when in football is the you know this dude's like i guess sometimes it goes with like brady's ball where it gets mm-hmm. like tossed up but this is a rare time where like this home runs are a big thing in the mlb and like a big like everyone knows what a freaking home run is and stuff like that's like you can make real money off of catching one of those things and that's up to anybody in those stands can get can get one yeah that's true i mean the, yeah the guy that caught albert pujols last home run that one was going to be an expensive one too yeah and it's like with brady's I don't even remember what happened. I think Dan, 
and like Mike Evans just throw it like in the stands. He caught Brady Sanchez. I think so, Screw yeah. it, man. <laughs> but then it wasn't even his last touchdown anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, and the other dude spent like a ridiculous amount of money like uh, buying it too on the bed, and then Brady came back. <laughs> Speaking of Brady coming back, GG, my man. <laughs> my boy decided football was better than his marriage. Let's dive into that. <laughs> what do you think is what do you think would be a more iconic and great World Series? If the Dodgers played against the Yankees or if they play against the Astros? Because those are the two top seeded teams in the AL. Yeah. And for very different reasons, those are both you've got one historical rivalry yeah even though they haven't really been rivals lately and then you've got another and, and that's like the two biggest markets in baseball uh, yeah um of west coast versus east coast and then the other one you've got the good guys versus the bad guys <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's got to be um i think it'd be so different because dodgers versus yankees that's two of the biggest fan bases right going against each other but if it's um versus the Astros, that's just everybody, like the entire rest of the MLB rooting uh, against one specific team. Yeah, and that's, see, that's the only way you can make that happen because I think the M- MLB fans don't like the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they also don't like the Yankees. So it's sort Yeah, of- it's like who would you, who's the worst villain? <laughs> who's the worst of the two? Yeah, I don't know. I think that seeing that... Because the Astros, the reality is that the, the players on the, ro- on the Astros roster... There's very few people on there that were involved in the 2017 yeah. uh, season, but fans don't forget. Yeah, and the Dodgers have a lot of the same players. Actually, there's mm-hmm. quite a lot of Dodgers that have been here since 2017. Astros have had a lot of players move on, so there's only only a handful. But that's what I was trying to think. How long do you think this is going to stay with the Astros? Like, do you think this is going to go? Do we, do we have I mean, years left or this is like a- for f- probably yeah a long time but even the the players that were on the team wherever they go it follows them yeah. for the rest of their career as well as it should um i mean there's players that play for other teams and they get booed when they stand up to bat so. yeah i mean hey don't cheat <laughs> hey don't cheat them big dog <laughs> you don't want to get booed don't cheat them mm. <laughs> it's it's interesting to me because like those guys, like they took World Series away, a uh, World Series away from a team, but or multiple teams. But Brady, like he straight, he cheated also. We don't really like the NFL doesn't talk about that as much either. Like as fans, feels like we don't bring that up as much. But his is a little weirder too. Was it's like it's did a weird it, situation? Did it really like? Of course, he did it. That means it was helping him out, but did it affect everyone else as yeah, much? To it's be honest, the Deflate Gate, like that whole thing. <clears throat> That chapter feels like so close that I like I yeah. like nobody ever or at least I never really think about it. And everyone's like, he was I suspended remember, for I'm like, six oh yeah, games. no, yeah. he actually missed like a decent amount of a season for <laughs> yeah. that. Like but, he was suspended. Tom Brady was suspended for cheating. Yeah. But I, I also think I mean there is obviously a uh, that that's a lot different to me than like I don't know. Cause like he he did the time and then yeah. well, missed the games. Put but. like the Patriots in like in the like the Astros shoes, what if it, we found out that Bill Belichick had been? Oh, this already been rumors of this before, but like Bill Belichick had been like stealing like play calls from the other team. Then it would be wild. Like imagine if it was like yeah, if they used those to win the Super yeah, if they Bowl. used it when yeah. win the Super Bowl and they were stealing play calls. Then what would we? How, how would we look at Brady and Bill Belichick? Probably a little different. <laughs> that was gonna be an egregious statement. I was gonna say, what sport do you think you could cheat in the easiest and get away with it? I was gonna. I, was gonna, I don't even know how to. Add. <laughs> I don't even know. I was how gonna to say, it. what can I? Do? <laughs> I was trying to think, what can I do? I mean, it depends on what you mean by cheating. Like you yeah. can, in football, you can get away with penalties. Yeah, that's but that doesn't feel like yeah. cheating. That's just yeah. I can get away with a few holding smart calls. Football. Yeah, yeah I don't think getting away with holding uh, is not cheating in my eyes. Yeah. It's just being smart. Well, like like if you can find a way to uh, commit a penalty without getting yeah. called for it. No, our, That's smart. our guest and friend of the show, Ryan Kulu, always said, like, if you watch the offensive line, defensive line, there's a penalty, like, three penalties every snap. He's like, everybody in there is doing something. Like, if you, like, every single NFL play could have a penalty called on it, is what DCA and Ryan Kulu both said, which I, mm-hmm. I for sure believe. It's it's hard to see. Because every every play that DCA was on the field, That's what, that was excessive handsomeness oh, right there. That's what that was. <laughs> Look at him back there. <laughs> That man's in London right now, living his best life. 
He's actually not. He said that he's really tired. <laughs> he, yeah. He said he did not want to eat the beans and toast for breakfast. So that that is not that is not a keto friendly. How did he breakfast. word it though? What he said? He said like no. no. I, I, I I said <laughs> I said DCA. They trying to feed you beans and toast for breakfast. He said they tried. What did he do to that? What did he do to that poor little worker that came up? He said beans and he was toast on Facetime. He said they tried, and then I looked, and there was somebody tied up behind him. <laughs> someone. <laughs> Someone tied up on Big Ben. <laughs> what would your reaction be if you were just sitting there and someone legit walked up and put a plate of beans and toast? Because I'll be real. I'm one of the like few people. I hate beans. I hate beans and I hate mashed potatoes. Hey, lock me up, man. And joy. And, and love and what peace. Else, what else? Christmas. <laughs> yeah, little it. children. Oh, uh, I hate presents. <laughs> All that is good in the world. <laughs> I thought you were just going to start listing off love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith. Gatorade. Yeah, that's one of the best things in the world. That you, you were trying to think of everything that is good in the world. You named Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> There's a long list, and, and a top 20 of those was Gatorade. I had, I had one of those uh, Gator lights. You ever had those? Oh, yeah. I had one of those last G2. night. G2. Changed my world. Now there's like 40 different kinds. Why are we talking about Gatorade now? Hey, that's life. Let's say, what is the best flavor of Gatorade? Out of the ma- main ones, because I don't know how off offshoot you're going, but moderately offshoot Glacier Freeze. That's a really good. That's a really. I'm good also. Choice. Some people hate on it, but I'm wide awake on the lemon lime. Yeah, me too. I love the lemon lime. Guess what? Oh no, orange is the one they hate on. Green apple, people hate on also. Didn't know that was a flavor. And guess what? That's remember that was the one at BC just was dark green, and people were like, "Oh, there's only green apple left." I'd walk up and go. One green apple, please. <laughs> one of your finest green. Which one's the white one? Is that the one you said? No, Glacier Freeze is the light blue one. I think it's just white. I don't know. The one I had last night was white. <laughs> and it was really good. I think it was, I don't even know. It was just white Gatorade. It just, <laughs> it's not that it just says white Gatorade. You're like, this is the one that's going to hit. <laughs> no, I, no, there's some, like the, the, the darker blue one. Yeah. That's, don't try to tell me that's a flavor other than just blue. No, that's just blue. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, what is I, it? What do they call it? Cool blue. Yeah, cool blue. I it's love. Like, what does that taste like? Blue. I it love how like that's like a blue. legit thing that like everyone's grown up and like you just it's the color like that's what it is. I like how we just skipped on red. Like we sleep on red. Yeah. You don't that's, like red? No, fruit punch is whack. Wow. <laughs> no, it's not a whack, but I would never choose it. <laughs> fruit punch is really good. <laughs> that, that red forty can give you cancer. <laughs> He's doing his research. All right. Let's move. I want to play a little game with you real quick. All right. It's going to be create your dream quarterback. And we're going to go football IQ, arm, legs. I'm going to give you three options for each. Okay. And you're going to make your dream quarterback. All right. Oh, I don't get the pick of anybody. I get choices. Do you want the pick of anybody? Because then I can scrap. I don't know. Well, it's up to you. You're the game master. <laughs> yes. I'm the dungeon master for today. And we're going to go right into it. So create your dream quarterback. Football IQ is going to be first. You have the choice between Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning for their football IQ. I'm going to go Peyton Manning. That's a really good one, too. It was either going to be that one or uh, Brady for me. I threw in Brees just to be like, what if he said Brees? <laughs> I mean. It's close, but it's like we always. I mean, I mean, Tom Brady's been playing the game for 70 years, so obviously he has high IQ. But yeah. Um, yeah, when I think of football IQ, I think of. Yeah, I think of the sheriff. Yeah. I think of Peyton, Peyton Manning. His. Uh, his uh, stuff he does at the line, yeah. recognizing defenses, mm-hmm. calling audibles, unmatched. Exactly. Yep. So next, let's go to arm. You have the choice between Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes. What was that? Say that again. Uh, Craig Young, dream quarterback uh, for arm. My bad. Why did I say the title? You, 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 I just need to know the yeah. people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. This one's a little harder. Oh, man. Um... This is this one's tough, but I'm gonna go Aaron Rodgers. Me too. I I everyone knows like dude, we grew up watching Aaron Rodgers throw it downfield and have these like insane Hail Marys and stuff. Like this is what we grew up watching. So I don't know how I couldn't choose Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Hail Marys and I mean, how many picks he throw last year? Not a single one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's on record of not throwing one. <laughs> but I bet like. So me and you picking Aaron Rodgers, I bet you show kids who are like like a few years younger than us, I bet they're picking like Patrick Mahomes. Well, I don't care what they say. 
Okay, finally, so you picked Peyton Manning for his football IQ, Aaron Rodgers for his arm. Now for the legs, you have Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson, or Steve Young. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Do I even have to say any others after the first after the first one? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you got Michael Vick for this one? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got it's got to be Michael Vick for me too. But again, um, I could have gone Brady for the football IQ. I could have like I could have taken Allen or Mahomes for arm, but legs. I'm gonna go Vick. You know, it's it's the boy Vick. We all we all know what that man's known for, right? He's Michael Vick. He is known for beating dogs and running around. All right, so now let's keep going with some more news. Uh, the Cowboys are three and one since losing Dak Prescott. What are the chances we see Cooper Rush take Dak's job in the future, or do you think Dak's gonna come back and be plopped right back in? Zero percent. Yeah, me too. I think even though um, even though uh, Cowboys owner said that it's gonna be an open competition, it's not really gonna be open competition. You just paid Dak Prescott however much money to be your starting quarterback, you can't throw the guy in that's making less money. You know, it's like, it's it's a business at the end of the day. You Like, even if the guy's no, playing yeah. better, you know the deal. Like, Yeah, I mean, Jerry Jones isn't going to... Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it will, and, and that's the reality is that when you have... It's it's very unlikely for, for the stuff like that to happen. Even, like, when you look at the Steelers and people say, like... Oh, who's going to be the guy? Is it going to be Mitch Trubisky or is it going to uh-huh. be Kenny Pickett? Yeah. Well, anytime you draft a quarterback, anytime you draft a quarterback in the first round and yeah. you're not the Green Bay Packers, <laughs> you intend for that. Like that's the plan is for that person to be your starter. Exactly. Yeah. The amount of money that they're going to be paying Kenny Pickett versus uh-huh. how much they're paying Mitch Trubisky, mm. just from a money perspective, it's like he's. Yeah. That's that's the guy, you know. Yeah, that's the guy. And you just, like yeah. as fans, we have to know like it can be simple for us, right? To be like, oh, this backup's playing better every time he's in. But if you if your ownership and your team just paid your starting quarterback this massive salary, it doesn't really matter how good the backup's doing. They're gonna put the starting quarterback in. They just gave all that money to, or they're gonna risk looking like idiots, or they're gonna list just having all that money just sit on the bench. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just how it goes. It's a bit. It's a business first, and they're not going to let all that money just waste away for no reason. Mm-hmm. So, like, even though we can be like, "Oh, we need to see this guy play. Like, he's young. He, like, he he's performing better than like Cooper Rush is performing better than Dak. Like, keep Cooper Rush in. We're on this run. When Dak gets back, you know, let like let Cooper Rush keep playing. Like, we have to be honest with ourselves. Dak Prescott made like just got this massive contract. He's going to be their guy when he comes back. Like, even though Cooper Rush has been doing great and they're three and one. Dak Prescott's going to be put immediately back in that starting position. Even though they might hit us with it, it's going to be you know it's going to be a, a competition. We'll see who plays better. Like okay, we know the deal. We I know who I'm going to see when Dak Prescott is cleared to play. Or we're going to see Dak on the field. Yeah, well, I'm and part of I mean, you know one reason you might say oh it's going to be an open competition is because you know Cooper Rush is going to be quarterback for quite a while. Yeah, Dak's out for quite a while, and you don't be like. I don't know. It's the optics of like going out and saying, yeah, no, he's hot. Yeah, he's hopefully he wins a couple, but obviously he's going right back to the bench. Exactly, yeah. This sort of would be a weird thing to say. Uh huh. Yeah. It, like, even though it's known, like, Cooper probably knows, he's like, Dak's going to be the guy when he gets back. It wouldn't be good for his morale and for the team morale to be like, well, yeah, Cooper Rush is going to be like, he's going to play, but we all know the real deal. Like, it's, it's, it's out of poor taste to say that every week when that question is brought up. Mm-hmm. Especially with the media, like that's good question's gonna come up, right? If Cooper Rush keeps Cooper Rush keeps performing well, the question's still gonna come, like, is Dak's job in danger? And they're gonna like they're not they're gonna be like, Oh, Cooper Rush is doing really good right now, but we have to keep Cooper Rush feeling good and going forward while Dak's not it. Dak's not here. Yeah. I mean I think going forward Dak's job is in danger, or I hope it is. Yeah. Um or maybe not hope it is, but I think it should be. Yeah. Not because I think Cooper Rush is going to take his place, but I, I don't know offhand what his contract is like, but I just don't think he's... No, I don't think he's played like... I mean, I think he's good. I don't... We yeah. haven't seen enough uh, consistency to for him to be the elite quarterback that a lot of people expect him to be or want him to be. Especially when, like, year in, year out, the whole conversation was, like, the Cowboys roster is so insanely stacked, like... 
it was always the joke where it's like, why aren't they winning the Super Bowl every year? Why aren't they in the playoffs every year? Because look how good their roster is. So it's like, it's always these weird things. It's like, Dak gets hurt, Dak's not playing well, and they don't make it. And this insane roster is left. Where, again, like we always make fun of the NFC East, you know, my Giants are in there, but still, like, that's an easy division, dude. Like, if you're the Cowboys and you had that roster that you had the past couple of years, that should have been your division to run away with. And now the Eagles are doing it. That's life, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe the Giants are doing it. We always, I'm acting like the Giants are dead. They're 3-1 and one right now, too. Roll, go Tigers. <laughs> Not all 3-1 and one teams are created equal. <laughs> That's very true. Hey, guys, if you ever feel the bad. Bi- the Bills are 3-1. and one, The Giants are 3-1. and one. <laughs> Which team is? <laughs> so they're the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guys, the Bills are three and one. The Giants are three and one, so they are at equal level. And then the Raiders are not. Here. <laughs> obviously, the Giants are better than the Raiders, guys. Come on, like on paper, you know, in play, they're obviously better. We were just watching uh, the Thursday night football game downstairs. First off, the most boring game ever: the Colts versus the Broncos. But we started watching the uh, like the in depth view for a little bit, and where they showed like the the route trees as they're happening, and the time, and like the win percentage at the bottom. It's a little too much, isn't it? Like to watch a full game is that what? It, I got. The, I get that some people probably love it, but it got to be a little too much for me. Well, it's cool in the sense that like it's cool to watch film, which is yeah. like what that like that's like that's what, what that's, that's for. Really yeah. good film to watch, <laughs> yeah. but I would never want to sit down and watch no, three hour yeah. long game in like just like, like that. it's yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> because we were, it was you even said like, what if they added Peyton and Eli to the side too? Because already that massive blue check or that massive blue. Like it's taking up a good twenty five percent of the screen. Like that, it's massive. Those blue bars right there, and it, like it's hard. And then like the little things around the players are spinning, and my brain is having a really hard time just trying to stay focused on what's happening. Yeah, they don't even give you a marker where it's like, here's the ball being thrown. It's just like, I okay, uh, dropped. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> like, yep, congrats, man. Yeah, that w- would probably take a lot of programming to do that. Yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. One day. One day. That's. Metaverse. Oh, hey, Garbo, hey, Garby. I've made a list on my phone for a long time of what? Don't look at it. <laughs> it also says Noah's birthday present. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I made a list on my phone of what sporting events I would want to show. I have to show my kids. <clears throat> or what, like, specific events. And I'm going to give you some of them and you tell me if they're clean or not. Okay. So, <laughs> for first, I got the 2016 uh, Slam Dunk Contest. The very before you yeah. continue, the, the yeah, very first it. sporting event I'm gonna let my kids see uh-huh. is uh, this week's Thursday night football game between the Broncos and the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I want to play football. Well, let's. I'll show you something first. <laughs> Final score eight eight. <laughs> so I got 2016 NBA Slam Dunk uh, Dunk Contest, which was probably the best dunk contest. Okay, that's easy one on the show then. Uh, Spurs versus Heat, uh, game six. Another clean one. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I don't want to connect to Noah's AirPods. Thank you. Uh, the 2020 NBA Slam Dunk Contest, another great one. 2016 NBA Finals, uh, Warriors LeBron, right? You got to show them that one. And then 2010 NBA Finals, Lakers over Celtics in seven. Game, right? Got to show them that one. 20, uh, 2001 World Series, Diamondbacks versus Yankees. Why did I pick that one? I don't know. That one stuck with me. <laughs> and the last one, the only uh, specific football game I want to show them is 2017 Raiders versus Chiefs, Color Rush. I know you remember that one. I was there. <laughs> I was there when they had to throw the touchdown four times, and it was the clock was stuck yeah. at zero for like yeah. a minute. <laughs> But yeah, those would be the ones I would show them. And, and then also, if I had to pick another one, it probably would be p- prime Noah Pitcher 2018. Doing what? Just living life. <laughs> it's me taking the SAT. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Look, little Johnny. That's Noah. <laughs> Dad, why does he look sad? If you had to take the lives, uh, the, the years, that, the years that you've lived so far, <laughs> you're gonna make me rank the 21 years of my no, life. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, rank the 22 years of your life. Uh, 2016 S tier. Uh, <laughs> 2004 got diabetes, 
probably putting that F. <laughs> Is that when you had diabetes? 2004? I moved to Bakersfield 2004, so it went downhill for both of us. <laughs> That's, oh, dude, something about it shifted. <laughs> it's like the forest where there always has to be a light and a dark side. Something shifted. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick one year that you lived so far and go back and live the whole year again, what would it be? I know which of mine is locked in. 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Back when times were simple. Yeah, I was a I was a pterodactyl for Halloween. <laughs> I... <laughs> what would you go back to? <laughs> what was a pterodactyl? <laughs> That's what you want to experience. Like, you could be a pterodactyl this Halloween, now, dude. I actually don't know if it was that year, but I was a pterodactyl one year. <laughs> that's the year I, that's the year i want to go back <laughs> whatever year you're a pterodactyl it's you have to go back to don't google don't fact check yourself mom when was i a pterodactyl <laughs> mom when was i a pterodactyl <laughs> i was hulk hogan for one halloween and what proud of you man <laughs> yeah that's a pterodactyl <laughs> You got the pose and everything. Dude. You're out straight. Uh, does that look like I was three? Oh, no, you don't look happy. That, are you sure you want to go back to then? No, I was locked in. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you saw a happy pterodactyl? That's that's true. Do you think you you for sure hit him <laughs> at least once that day, too? There was a screech. It was too. also the year the Raiders lost the Super Bowl. Oh, so okay. So that was really... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say that if the Dodgers win the World... If we win the World Series this year, the Dodgers, this year's Dodgers team will be the best baseball team in the history of the sport. That's a Noah pitcher. Would you like to back it up or would you like to just say it? No, I'd just like to throw it out there. Hit me with a team that's better. Can, can you? The depth on this team yeah. is wild too. They're doing all this without their number one pitcher, by the way, who's been injured for forever. So, Who do you think their opponent's going to be in the World Series? The Astros. You think so for real? I don't, I don't think the Yankees are going to make the World Series. They, you know, they're, they, Aaron Judge is that guy. But they don't have as many guys as the Dodgers. Or, yeah. or, I don't know. I was going to go through and fill out a bracket or a bracket of the postseason. And then I realized that 90 percent of the time i was just picking whoever was higher seated to, to make it and i didn't feel good about that it's just you going dodgers dodgers <laughs> here's the top five uh smash brothers uh characters number one steve that's all i need to say steve bob sonic yoshi uh probably diddy Kong. miss 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 M marth nothing else needed Marth is your boy. Give me Marth. I don't care if we're t playing that new crap or if we're on the OG brawl. <laughs> if you give me Marth, it's this. Uh, the, also, uh, by, by the way, the original GameCube one. When uh, zero shame in me, C sticking. By the way, <laughs> give me someone. I go. That's you. Like that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, whatever gets the job done you gets do the that, job and done. You, you'd be. You go. That was a good win. Let's put, it, put that in the win column. I mean, what is worse? My two options, B, Marth, C, Stick, B, Pikachu, down B, down B, down B. That, that's, that's true. Because what's worse? <laughs> would you rather that happen or would you rather play the new one and just hear, Picky Fire, Picky Fire, Picky, <laughs> on repeat? <laughs> As you're getting juggled off the map. <laughs> also, yeah, how excited do the boys get when a Pokeball lands on the court? In old, <laughs> in, no, in at, at that point, nothing else matters. No, straight. I've seen people made like deadliest combo alive, drop it all to grab a Pokeball. And I've seen you drop everything just to throw it off the cliff. That thing got a little more range than people think when you throw it. Make sure you oh, yeah. make sure you're backed up a little bit. <laughs> Number five, Falco. Number four, we fit. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. We got to delete the podcast. <laughs> Number four, we fit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Does this, <laughs> does this look like the type of podcast that a professional athlete would want to come to? <laughs> Number three, Toon Link. <laughs> Can that be our new stick where as soon as it goes downhill, we just start ranking to you <laughs> and smash characters? I actually created an algorithm that puts into play like a lot of 
statistical analysis, lots of advanced statistics and stuff, throws it all together and approximates, creates a formula and tells you how many wins it thinks a team is going to win this year. Yeah. It has the Lakers winning 28 games with a margin of error of 15 games. Which means that there's no world in which they win more than 43 games. What? That sounds accurate to me. <laughs> What's wild is because I have two different Laker fans. I have you, who's like depressed, and then I have other ones who I know who saw yesterday's game and said they're going to win the finals. The Lakers have a floor of five games and a ceiling of 43 games. <laughs> And what's crazy is that no, you're not joking. You actually believe that. Like, look at Yeah. Realistically, absolute best. Eight seed. Going into this season, did you feel, do you feel better about this season or last season? Like, based on the beginning of the season, which one did you feel better about? Probably last season, huh? Yeah, I felt better. I, I thought people, I, when people were like, oh, we have Russ, we have all these people, we're going to win it all. I never thought that was happening, but I thought we were... What did your algorithm say then? the playoffs. My algorithm back then said we were going to be fifth seed. <laughs> no, I said we were going to be fourth seed. I lied. But then this one says... <laughs> this one says floor of five games. <laughs> if LeBron won... If legitimately LeBron won five games, <laughs> what would that do to his legacy? If that's how many games he won, healthy... A healthy LeBron James wins five games. Probably, probably he'd be the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> I think there'd be legit, like legitimately there'd be people who say he's still the GOAT if he won five games. What's the lowest amount of games LeBron could win next season? People would still say he's the greatest of all time. A fully healthy LeBron who played a lot of minutes. Uh, for me to say he's the GOAT, um, he'd have to win all of them. <laughs> Have to win 82. Okay. What's the lowest number, you think? Mm, depends on how many people. Well, pe there's some people that will always defend him. Yeah. That would say even if he didn't win a single game. What character from Mario would you rather be? I'd be a Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a Goomba, you? I'd be a Goomba, bro. <laughs> did, did you ever watch the live you action be... one from like the... Yeah, baby. Was that like the 90s? Yeah. Or like the... That one was weird. Yeah, did you... How they like evolved... The Goombas evolved... Was it Goombas or was it something else? That they like evolved from... They like incorporated evolution yeah, and like yeah, a yeah. bunch of... Was it the turtles? Did they evolve or no? Oh, I think it was. It, it was something reptilian. I think it was the turtles. Did you see the trailer for the new one? Chris Pratt. I don't really watch trailers anymore. That's good. That's smart. That's what Darren doesn't do either. He says I, it spoils the whole movie. If out. anything, I watch like the first tiny little bit or I'll watch like the teaser trailer. I'll tell you this. Chris but, Pratt's voice will shock you as Mario. Good. But I, because I feel like I just want to watch like enough to know whether I want to watch the movie. But someone like i'm like Mar it's mario i already know what it's about i'm you know, and, know i'm gonna watch this and by the season. way yeah you could have just said mario movie coming out here's the date i would have gone yeah 100 oh, you don't have to give me a trailer i'll be there no it's a freeing experience when sometimes i went to every sonic premiere I'll, sometimes i'll go to movies with my family and they'll be like you want to go to a movie i'm like oh what is it and I, sh I show up never even heard the movie no idea what it's about just walk in yep it's uh -huh. a freeing experience where you have yeah. no idea what you're rocking into. Because then you're actually, you're actually like, like in the moment, like being like, dang, this is wild. Yeah, What's going to happen next? I think a lot of movies would be better if there were no trailers. I think so too. Spider-Man included. Spider-Man, if I didn't know that uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire were in that movie and I went to it and saw them, can you, the tears that would have came down would be insane. Yeah, I don't like the whole like, how there's like, like movies like that. There has to be three trailers for it or um, whatever. Yeah, I don't like that. And do you have, do you know people, was I know people who like, Googling spoilers and stuff before we go see a movie. I think it's you. Hang on. <laughs> What's wild is because uh, DCA would also say it's me. I think it is. Because I was hit with what was I think I, you follow, you probably follow like all the like rumor yeah, accounts. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when I, they're like rumored, this person was seen on set yeah. of this. I'm like, I don't want to know that. Yeah, like, yeah, cool. Yeah, you yeah. found that out. Good research, but I don't want to know that. I need to stick more to like the, st especially especially with like Marvel movies and stuff. Or I guess Marvel, not as intense anymore. But like staying off Instagram and stuff. Lights out. Yeah, staying off Instagram and stuff because that's when they would get me. Like I'd just be on Instagram, it'd be 
some dude sketchy holding his phone like in the thing. I'm like, that's Iron Man dying. People forget about the Wasco clown. Not me. Not me. I, I am the Wasco. I saw him. I saw someone pretending to be one. Because there was like, it got to the point where there was like duplicates. Like, and they thought they were funny. And, and then uh, they were getting like ran over. Dude, at the end of Aaron Judge's career, when he's done with baseball, we should say, Aaron, we're going to put you on steroids for a few months. And we're going to give you a metal bat. Let's see how far you can hit this thing. Mm -hmm. And let's just see the full capabilities of a human. Mm -hmm. What do you think is that number? He, how far do you think he could hit it, your uh, feet? Well, if it's at the end of his career, we, he's probably not yeah, at what he once was. But then you have to calculate the steroids into. If you took, but although, <laughs> <laughs> although Albert Pujols hitting some dingers and he's mm -hmm. fifty five years old, mm -hmm. six hundred fifty four. Yeah, that's a very specific number too. Algorithm. Algorithm told you that one too. Your algorithm is perfect for everything. It's the same algorithm that I use for Yeah. If sports gambling gets legalized in California, hey, there's gonna be a new segment on this show, big dog. <laughs> it's gonna be called Losing Money with Noah and Austin. We'll be real, I'll be real with you. If sports gambling gets legalized, I'll tell you how much I lose. I'll be honest. I'll have a tracker right here. I'll have a board. It'll say yeah. I've lost this much. Bet all of your money against the Lakers this season. Yeah, this isn't financial advice, but 99% of sports gamblers quit <clears throat> before they win a gajillion dollars. Let that sink in. <laughs> That's statistically proven is that they almost always quit before they win big. They always quit before they win big. Yes, guaranteed. Almost or almost every sports gambler quits before they hit big. You could take that and you could put it in science. What's your and and what is the excuse for why you would quit? Scared to take out a second mortgage on the house? Yeah. Scared to with, over withdraw your credit card? Mwah, mwah, mwah. My kids are gonna. My, my wife's gonna leave me. Tom Brady left his wife. <laughs>